Hi guys and welcome to Chairboys1887. Today I'm here with Dave Salisbury. Okay, he's um, he's one of the one of the hardcore fans who, who sits uh, sits in the terrace behind me, um, literally a few seats away from me actually, um, and sometimes you can hear him. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to talk to him um, a bit similar to to the discussion I had with with Lisa. Um, just asking the same questions and, and getting to know a bit about his uh, his history of Wicked Wanderers. So, Dave, uh, welcome to the show. Um, what uh, what sort of first enticed you to come and come and watch a club like Wicked Wanderers? Uh, really, I've I've been watching Premiership football. Yeah. Um, and just kind of, it's not the same as it was. Okay. And there's something about Wickham that is just it's different. It's more of a family than a in the club, so sure. yeah, I love it. Okay, um, is that sort of uh, not only the atmosphere, but the the playing style maybe as well, or the level of the league that we're in? Um, no, I just think there's something special about this place. Okay, I yeah, think, yeah, it's just it's just different, and I think the family thing, especially last year, you know, going as far as we did and getting yeah. to where to Wembley yeah, and the uh, playoffs, it was just special, and I think. Um, in a lot of the bigger clubs, you lose that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, so what was your what were your first memories of of Wickham of Wickham Wanderers? Um, as a kid, it was sitting above the hospital, looking down, trying to get a free view. Yeah, yeah, uh, into Lokes Park, and uh, and that was it really. Just as a kid, sitting up on the bank watching sure. the football, trying to get a free view. Okay, well. So. You see a lot of people doing that uh, uh, around uh, around Adams Park these days as well. So it's not only uh, not only back in the days at Lokes Park. It's it's also here. Um, okay then. So when you when you first sort of started coming to to watch Wickham and, and everything, who was the who was the player you thought, wow, he's he's really one of one of the best players we've got, and, and I really like like the way he he plays and. Uh, that would be Jason Cousins. Jason Cousins. Yeah. Just always remember watching him when we was younger. Just of course. Yeah. I uh, one of my one of my memories of, of Jason Cousins was, and this was um, this was sort of the the same time that as the years I was born. So I was sort of brought up with that. Um, was his his famous red card um, over over on the other side of the over on the other side of the stadium, um, and I always. I've seen all the footage and everything of Martin O'Neill just marching him down the tunnel and, and not and, and asking him not to come back out and, until he'd really thought about what he'd done and, and I love that. Yeah. Um, that was that was one of my memories, uh, one of the only memories I've got because I I was uh, I was so I wasn't even really born when when that happened. So uh, that's one of the memories I, I've sort of been been shown uh, down the years. Um, okay, so moving on to uh, to sort of this year's uh, current crop, as it were. Um, who who do you think epitomises the spirit of Wickham, just like Jason Cousins did back in those days? Um, who do you think, if you can pin maybe one or or even two players, um, two players down to that? Uh, I think we're a different team when um, no. Aaron plays. Okay. Yeah, and Holloway as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think so they're that's... I think they're the two. And we've got some we've got some new talent we've got this season yeah, that's um, starting to come on as well. Like. So, uh... Yeah, um I think the 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 two Aaron's, especially Aaron Pierre and Aaron Holloway uh, Holloway are really, really sort of coming coming into their own now. Um it's taken I think Pierre's been with us three years and Holloway's been with us yeah. two. So so I think they're they're sort of really coming to coming to the fore at the minute and yeah. Takes a while for it all to jail. So. Yeah, and Holloway's starting to get some goals. Um, took, took him time, didn't yeah. it? So, uh, so we'll see what happens with that, and, and hopefully he can he can score a few more. Yeah. Well, hopefully he'll get a run in the team. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. that's obviously the main thing, isn't it? That, yeah. that he gets played, and yeah. and we'll, we'll see. Not playing. No, that's it. Um, okay, then. So, what uh, we, we've talked about a bit about the, um, the the previous years, and, and obviously previous players that we've had, and. <clears throat> What do you think the the expectation level is of the club uh, this year after doing so well last year? Well, I think minimum we won't play off. Mm. Yeah, and you know I'd be happy if we got. Uh, do you think? We'll, do you think we'll get it? Yeah, um, I reckon we will. Yeah, yeah. 
I reckon we're, we're starting, we've had a little dip, Yeah. but as people settle down and we start to gel, I think we're doing alright. Yeah. I, I think with the bar set so high, yeah. it's easy to sit and say, oh, we're going to do the same yeah, this year, and it's just, football's not like that. Of course, yeah. Um, okay, out of, um, what what did you sort of make of, of, uh, of the last couple of years, really? I mean, coming from just literally scraping through uh, to staying in the league yeah. and, then, and then getting to Wembley last year. What, what were your views on that? Oh, it's just amazing. I think, that, I think that's half of our problem, or the fans' problem is, you have to remember where, where you were. Mm. Yeah, and, you know, you look at Chelsea now. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, football's difficult. You only need one or two things to start going wrong, a few decisions. Yeah. yeah it's, it's difficult, so. I the one of the one of the main memories I have from last year is or two memories was that um, I didn't actually come to the to the second leg here um, to the first leg here or was it second leg I can't remember um, that when we played Plymouth yeah um, was it first leg uh, no first leg I think it was second leg second leg guys yeah. my memory is ridiculous yeah, yeah. guys so you'll have to yeah. you'll have to forgive me um, the the second leg um, here at Adams Park I I didn't actually come to it so um, purely and simply because I was saving money up to, to actually go to Wembley so and I was like if I don't go to this game I will 100% go to Wembley and I would never have lived it down if we've yeah. never made it to Wembley because yeah. I, I stuck to my word I said I didn't go to the first leg I didn't go to the second leg if we do make it to Wembley I will go and, and I will drag whoever wants to come with me yeah. to Wembley on the coach all the yeah. way up there um, and, and I stuck to my word, yeah. so, so I was quite happy with that. Um, in terms of um, moving completely away from, from Wembley and, and the heartache that we suffered, um, what position, um, in, in any sense of the word, do you see the club in, in five years' time? I would like to see us mid-table Division 1. I think yeah. if, if we're there in five years' time... Yeah. And then, you know, if, it's difficult because ultimately I'd like an investor to come in, mm. take it over <laughs> with a bit of cash, yeah. and I'd like us to be in five years' time, I'd like us to be in a championship. Yeah. But whether that's doable do or you, not. Do you think that would, um, you've obviously got, um, there's a lot of big spending clubs now, and I think uh, Sheffield Wednesday have just been taken yeah. over by a, by a big spending um, millionaire. Yeah. Do you think that would ruin us? Um, or with, with the current setup, if we kept the current managerial setup that we have with Ainsworth yeah. in charge, do you think he would go gung ho, or or do you think he would spend it wisely, like he is doing now, even with a smaller budget? Yeah, no, I think I think it's all about the setup from the top to the bottom, mm. and if you've got the right board there, and and you're identifying the right players to bring in, yeah, so then anything's possible. True, but um, yeah, okay. Um, so that was uh, that was the the sort of the interview part of the of the uh, of the session.
wonderful show. The singing was absolutely beautiful. Lauren basically is Edith Piaf. Please go and see. Okay guys, welcome back from, from the commercial break. Uh, I've still got Dave here with me and, uh, and we're just going to continue talking about our, our love for Wicked Wanderers as, uh, as it's, it is pretty much the same, um, which is hence why we're here today. Alright, so, um, just, just thinking, uh, thinking out loud in the, in the break there, I, I sort of thought, um, who, uh, there's, there's been a lot, of, a lot of players over the years that have gone from Wickham and made big things out of themselves. Um, uh, Jordan Ibe yeah. uh, is now starring in, in, in the Liverpool eleven, isn't he? Yeah. Um, in the Liverpool team week in week out. Um, I think we've we've had uh, Mike Williamson's now. He was in uh, in the Premier League with Newcastle. Yeah. He's gone to Wolves on loan. Um, there's a lot of them, really. I think. Is there any? Uh, yeah, you're gonna. I'm gonna um, struggle now. There's the, <laughs> the, the the defender that went to um, Cardiff Swansea. Uh, Roger Johnson. Yeah, Roger Johnson. Yeah, yeah. And then Steve Guppy. Yeah, that's probably. I think that is him and Matt Phillips are probably the yeah, two. Yeah, Matt Phillips. Yeah. The yeah. two, the two standout ones, yeah. I think, because um, Steve went from from us to Leicester, to Leicester yeah. when when Martin O'Neill left. Yeah. Um, and then from from Leicester he went to he followed Martin to Celtic. Yeah. Um, and then I think he played for played a, played for another team in the Premier League like Newcastle or, or something like Not that. Not sure. Really. Um, and then got an England cap. Um, I think he's the only yeah. the only player. The only player that I did. Yeah, the only yeah. only Wickham player at the minute who's got a, a senior England team call up um, and cap uh, appearance for for England. Um, hopefully that will change with with Jordan Ive in, in the Liverpool team. Um, yeah. Not not sort of uh, making any promises or anything like that, but hopefully he will get his chance. He's He'll be the one. We need a few more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Out of the out of the current crop, who who do you think um, will go far? Could could make it um, as as high as as high as potentially Steve Guppy or or even Matt Phillips, who's who's representing yeah. Scotland and. I I think O nine stands out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean he has flashes of brilliance and I think the longer he plays and the more when he walks out the more he more confident yeah. he feels and you know the, at the moment we've had a run so it must be difficult for them because they know what the crowd are feeling mm, yeah. so if, if we get to that point where we're winning week in week out crowd are behind you he'll start to play well yeah, yeah. it's it's quite hard to I think in even he was um, in the press recently he, yeah. he sort of said that the spell that he had at um, Conference Southside Wildstone last yeah. year and the year before that, so he was yeah. technically had a two-year loan with them, um, it stood him in good stead because the, the the standard of football isn't too similar, yeah. uh, isn't too different yeah. um, from Conference South. Yeah. Um, as I, I've been to a few games and, and it is there is sort of flashes yeah. that you can see. The, yeah. uh, there isn't much of a difference. Yeah. Um, well, I think as well. I think we st if we had a bigger pitch. Mm. One thing I see from here is we don't play with a lot of width. No. We could do a bit more yeah. width. Yeah. Stretch them. Yeah. Stretch the opposition. Yeah. And then we'd have a bit more time on the ball. Yeah. But I think that was that's probably um, the thing that, that most Wickham fans were sort of, maybe not so much last year because yeah. it was successful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now the teams are starting to get wise to us. It's like, oh, maybe we should go back to the bigger pitch. Yeah, I, um, think, I think we should. I think we'd be better off bigger pitch. But then, is it a fitness thing? Possibly. Players we've got? Possibly. Um, the the squad's getting younger and younger every year. Um, so they should be fit. Gary, Gary yeah. Thompson is is sort of um, narrowing yeah, that gap right. of um, of making the average age a bit higher. So, yeah. so he's done us um, he's done us a few favours with with the with the supporters with that one. Um, out of the out of the new crop, um, all of the new signings that we had, yeah. I think we had eight new signings in yeah. the summer. Um, who is, who who do you think is doing the business and, and who isn't, um, in your opinion? I don't, I don't think that there's nobody that isn't, um, or could do more um, in, instead do more. of. Um, first, if, we, if we start off with the with the player who you think, yeah, yeah he's he's the finished article straight away. He's he's a Wiccan player already. For I like through. I like Harry man. 
Yeah. It, it's difficult for him because he's he's playing in multiple positions. Yeah. So. Um, Do you I think like, he's done so well because he's he's already played he's played alone at us before? Yeah, nothing because he. Yeah, all that as well, and then the fact that he's also played higher mm. as well, played a QPR, so he knows what he's doing, and he just looks going forward. He looks good, so um, he's got a shot on him too. As a yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, as a as a Southampton fan as well, I don't yeah. um, know who you are. What do you think uh, of the young lad we've got, Jason McCarthy, um, uh, or as I call him, the cross between Paul McCarthy and Jason Cousins? Yeah, I think. Um, <laughs> well, I know an awful lot of the young lads. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'd like, uh, it'd just be a dream come true if they could get some of the lads, more <coughs> lads coming up from Southampton yeah. up to here. Because they're just class throughout mm. there. Yeah, um, okay. So that, that sort of sums up, um, sums up what uh, the, the questions that I've got for, for Dave at the minute. Um, we're going to have another, another break um, very shortly, and, and we're going to go and actually go and stand out, um, go and stand out, or go and sit where where Dave sits. Um, I'm here with with Dave again. These are these are the seats, um, or the seat that Dave's in is uh, is actually his his match day seat. Um, sometimes he he doesn't um, doesn't manage to get here for, for sort of three o'clock or or just before because he he does work and, and things. Um, before, so it is quite difficult. Um, so when when you come in, Dave, uh, what's what's the feeling like? Um, do you have any expectations or, or any butterflies or, or any uh, yeah, feelings yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah, I, I come here wanting to win. I expect us to win every single game. That's what I want. That's why I come to watch. I come, you know, but I understand that you can't always win. Mm. So things go wrong. Doesn't work for you. So yeah. But, um, for sure. yeah. If you um, if you could sort of recommend the club or, or someone who's never seen, never watched Wickham before, or never even watched football before, yeah. if you could, um, what would you say to them if you were to recommend Wickham Wanderers as as their first club to come and watch? What would what would your your words of, of inspiration to them be? Um, oh, that's a tough one. Now you got me. Uh, it'd be just come and try it, just see what you think. Because yeah. you know, once you've been there and once you realise what it's all about, once that first goal goes in, yeah. then you're hooked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Once, you know, it's like any, any any game you go and watch. It's all about that first impression when you walk through here, when you hear the singing, when you're all, all going well. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. Okay, um, so how how long have you been? Um, been sort of sat in in these seats. I know I know I have seen you sort of float around and yeah. and you do sort of move around a bit because you do uh, sometimes do not get here yeah. on time and, and everything. But yeah, well, my, my wife and kids they're in the um, in the terrace. Right, okay. they're, they're hardcore, so uh, they're here all the time. So, um, they are. Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can hear them. Yeah, you can uh, hear them. Me. Yeah, she's loud. So uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I I don't know why I just prefer to sit up here and watch it. You get more of a view, both ends. And have stuff you ever like. have you ever been in in anywhere else like on yeah, that yeah, side yeah. or? So all the away games, we always sit behind the goal away games. Yeah. So and I've uh, last four or five games I've sat up there or, or been in with them, but um, last time I played I came back and sat here and I just prefer it more. Um, when I was a season ticket holder, I was over in the beach stand down, down the yeah. far far end over there. All oh, right. Okay. So. In the posh seats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how posh it was. I, I, I did most of my time standing up shouting. Oh, okay, fair <laughs> yeah, enough. So yeah, like, it's a bit like more vocal back then, yeah. Okay, um, so the, I suppose one of the, one of the questions would be um, what is the, is there like a, a match day routine or anything you go through? Even uh, say if it was a day that you weren't working and, and you didn't have to come straight from work yeah. or whatever. Um, is there like a, a match day routine that you have? So, so first thing in the morning, you have the same breakfast, all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. For, well, first of all, I um, I go and coach the kids. I coach under nine football. Okay. So, um, go and coach them. Finish the match. Home shower. 
jump in the car, get down here for sort of quarter to one, one o'clock, in the uh, bar for a few pints. Wow. Yeah. Has and, to be done. Yeah, and then... Is there a particular pint or is it just... No, uh, any pint will do. Pints <laughs> lager. So yeah. if you see him and, yeah. and he has uh, he has pints all over the table, yeah. you'll, you'll know uh, that, that he, he means uh, he means well. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and then we come out, uh, watch the match, and then if we win, normally back to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Pro propping up the bar yeah, again. So. Typical. Yeah. Um, and even if we lose, then sometimes you need more. So. <laughs> Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy Soros. Yeah, Jeremy Soros, yes, yes. Okay, um, so that's, uh, this is obviously his, his seat um, that, that he sits in and, and he does sort of mill around and, and goes to other seats as well. Uh, my one is, is just a, a few yards up there, um, so, and, I, and I do see him a few times. Uh, whether, whether, I, uh, whether I say hello to him or not, I, I make my mind up on the day, depending on how the game is going. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because uh, there is there is sort of that thing that um, you, you want to you want to sort of stay stay seated and you don't want to want to sort of move around too much if uh, if you're going if we're going quite well and, and we're winning games uh, so you want to try and stay in the same place just because uh, you, you might think that it's a bit lucky um, sometimes it isn't and it doesn't make a bit of difference at all I could be sat in the away fans and, and we'd still lose but um, but yeah. I, I don't think it makes much difference to you. Um, so uh, do, you do you think it's lucky sitting I, in I'm not sure, because it seems to me that every time I either get up to go to the loo yeah. or turn around and talk to somebody else, <laughs> we score. Wow. And I, last game, I'm not sure who we played, 3-0. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, Northampton. Yeah, yeah, I missed all three goals. Oh, yeah. wow. So, yeah, not good. Ridiculous. So maybe I need to go to the loo more <laughs> and we'll be... Uh, just, 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 keep back, just keep your back turned for the rest of yeah. the game, I think, uh, is, is the best way That's to do it. Um, if you had, if, if you had um, three, uh, three wishes yeah. um, and you, you couldn't change them, and, and one of them is you can't ask for three more wishes, by the way. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the usual that's trick. One. Um, yeah, if you had three wishes uh, for the football club, um, or, or the the fans, or, or anything like that. What would it be? What would they be? Um, you can you can rank them in order of, of the way you uh, of the importance of them, or yeah. or whatever. Or you can just say just say your three. Um, three wishes. I'd love it. I'd love us to be. You know, if we could get Premiership, which is I mean, nowadays that's going to be tough, tough. We've got to be realistic. But you know, in my lifetime, if I could get it. Superb, that'd be brilliant. Yeah. So that'd be my first wish. Second wish. That could be as crazy as you want, honestly. Oh, man. Um, what else would I want? European football. We did come close. Yeah, it came close. Yeah, European football would be good. And then, um, like probably everyone in there, they'd love to be sat over there managing. Yeah. 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 Well, that, um, that'd be um, that'd be a dream. We we can we can sort of make that sort of come true um, in a couple of minutes. We we are going to walk. Um, we are hopefully going to going to try and, and get into the home home dressing room, and, and you're gonna you're gonna sample yeah. sample the home dressing room, and you're gonna walk out of the tunnel. Yeah, cool. Um, we're not allowed on the pitch, guys, um, as it isn't a, a match day. Um, if it was a match day, we'd possibly be allowed to, but. Um, as it is the match day, uh, Dave's going to have his wildest dream come true and, and he's going to hopefully come out of the home dressing room and, uh, and walk out of the tunnel. Okay guys, I'm here with, uh, with Dave, uh, Dave Salisbury. He's, uh, he's just, played, uh, just played out on the, on the pitch. Um, uh, I'm just going just gonna to quickly interview him about his thoughts on the game. Um, so Dave, uh, what do you think your performance was like uh, today out on the pitch? To be fair, I thought it was amazing. I mean, hat trick in my first game. Yeah, just well, a yeah, dream come true. What would you make of the opposition? Uh, they, they looked a bit, a bit tasty in uh, in the first few minutes, but I, I, I thought at times they were non-existent. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's very good. Um, okay, so um, what else? Uh, what's what's the other um, what other points of the of the game? Do you think? Um, Went well for you, uh, other than other than the hat trick. Um, yeah. I, 
I thought half time couldn't come soon enough. I was tired. Yeah. Tired legs. Yeah. To, to be fair, there, there was a few shouts from the crowd saying "Get him off, get him off," yeah, and, exactly. and all that kind of stuff. Do you, but, uh, do you pay attention to any of that? No, no, no. Like, I just thought, you know, come out, carry on doing what you're doing. The goals will come, and then three in the second half. Uh, we yeah. uh, we did actually do a bit of research. You are actually the oldest player in the football league. Um, I can imagine. I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, just under under our goalkeeper coach Barry Richardson, at yeah. 46 years old. You, you've just uh, just pipped him. I'm afraid. Um, to, to being the oldest player in the football league, so congratulations. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, guys, uh, I'm still here with, with Dave. Um, we're currently in the, the press box, uh, press box area for Wickham Wanderers. Uh, as you can see behind me, we have um, this is my weather presenting uh, bit here. We, we have the, the board uh, with all the sponsors on and everything, so when, um, when the game's on, uh, on Sky, uh, you'll you'll see the players or or even the managers just come in and and stand in front of these boards like like myself and Dave are here. Um, we have just done a, a little mock uh, mock post match press conference uh, there, um, so please uh, please have a look at that. It's quite funny. It's, um, do you, is it impressive enough, or is it is it what you thought it was? Going uh, to be? No, uh, to be fair, I th I thought it was going to be better than this, and that's not a dig at the club. Mm, I no. just I just thought well, when you see some of the other stuff, but um, yeah, it's quite basic. Yeah, that's money. The I I do have um, a few a few stories that that I I have been told over the years. Um, to do with the to do with the change rooms. Um, the the first one that I that immediately springs to mind is the is the coat racks. Um, do you know why they're so high? Yeah. Why is that? So you don't hit your head on them. If you go in the they're in the away room. Yeah. They're down there, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And the other reason was uh, wasps. When when wasps yeah. were here, the um, the, the co racks were so high because that is literally uh, the height of the rugby players. Oh, right. that, that's why they're up so yeah. high. The, when uh, when it used to be just just Wickham, I think you can still see some of the holes in, yeah. in the wall where where they were lowered down yeah. to. Them, um, they they were were obviously heightened because the the rugby players were a lot taller than uh, than us. Um, so. You can you can imagine um, imagine how tall the, the rugby players are compared to compared to some of our lads. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holloway and Sierra are sort of the only taller ones, tallish ones yeah. uh, that we've got. And I would have to have a chair to get wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> another another interesting fact is um, when we played Chelsea in the Carling Cups, it was called back then. Um, he actually brought his whole squad with him um, for the first leg. Yeah. So uh, for that game only, we played. We had the away dressing room. Yeah. The only game yeah. ever in, uh, at this stadium where we've had to use the away dressing room rather than the home one yeah. because uh, there was there was too many Chelsea players. Uh, he literally brought a squad of thirty, yeah. um, even though he could only fit. Uh, um, a squad of 18 on the bench, uh, on the, in the in the team. Yeah. He brought the whole squad of 30 with him, um, and and they all trained before the game. Who was that? Uh, yeah, Jose Mourinho. Oh. When uh, in the the year that he was he was sacked, uh, which could happen. Hopefully again. Some part in that. Yeah, <laughs> could happen again very very soon. Um, hopefully, if, if we'd have knocked them out of the of the league cup. I think, anyway. 
if we if we had knocked Chelsea out yeah. um, that year, uh, I think we'd have we'd have probably won the cup. Um, a bit like the the FA Cup game as well. Yeah. If we'd beaten Liverpool, I think we'd have won it. I'm I'm just the yeah, internal yeah, yeah. optimist yeah. Yeah. because yeah. Of, because of the I think the the standard that the Arsenal were at uh, back then and Liverpool, yeah. I think that they they just couldn't handle handle the yeah, way yeah. they played. Yeah. Um, and the same with Chelsea when we brought them in. Uh, I just don't yeah. think I don't think they, they handled the way we play. Um, it's a long ball every five minutes and stuff. Yeah. But you know, so, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, so um, we're just looking around here. We've, we've got these motivational quotes and everything around uh, around the change room. Are you a, a big fan of that kind of thing, or do you think it helps, or um, would you would you have them? There, if you were the if you were the manager, or I, I, don't, I don't think it doesn't help. Yeah, so whether people take anything from it, I'm not sure. But I think it. I think if you're in a match and you're two 0 down, and the gaffer's telling you, yeah, yeah you need your to friend, the team cups at you, you're not yeah, looking yeah. at it for inspiration. Yeah, 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 you're listening to him. Yeah, you, or you should be. You should. Everything that's coming out of his mouth is more important than what's up there. Mm, yeah, and you should know that already. Yeah, yeah so. Whether it does everything or maybe if you had that just before you went out of the tunnel, mm. so it's the last thing you look up and yeah, yeah, rather, maybe, rather than nothing, yeah, rather than nothing. Um, so it's it's a bit similar with um, when when you were, when you said that it's it's a bit similar with the this is Anfield sign. Yeah. Um, at Liverpool, do you think that makes any difference? Do you think that brings brings a, a whole load of emotions to a, a footballer? I, I think if you're at things like that. If you're born and bred Liverpool, then yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a, if you're a local lad and you've grown up with that mm. around you, when you walk out and all you're thinking about is that badge on your chest and that, mm. that's the last thing you see. This is Anfield when you walk out. Then yeah, but if you're paid 250 grand and you come from Brazil, yeah. Yeah. does it really matter? Probably, Probably not. Probably not. Um, so okay then for. For someone who has sampled this dressing room and, and Anfield, um, I know we've we've mentioned him already today, um, Jordan Ibe. Do you think he he took inspiration from it? What what do you think his emotions were when when he saw it? Because um, he's he's obviously seen these ones here, um, and then he's gone and seen the ones that uh, the one at Anfield. It must be difficult for a. Uh, I'm not sure how old he was when he left. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Um, I think most of his inspiration will come from the players around him. Mm. Yeah. One, one hell of a squad he went into, wasn't it? Yeah. And then to, for a 17 year old, 16, 17 year old kid mm. to come into an environment like this. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden be playing, you know, second division or yeah, whatever exactly. football, and then within a season or so to get picked for Liverpool. He spends distance yeah. away from Stephen Gerrard and Luis Suarez and all that. Yeah, kind yeah, of. yeah. Yeah, to all of a sudden be sitting there going, I'm at school in Wickham, and now <laughs> yeah. moved up to Liverpool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, and now, uh, Jurgen Klopp's my manager. I met him myself then. Yeah. Well. Um, okay. Well, let's uh, let's round it off. Uh, round it off there, and uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Dave, for for coming on. Pleasure. Absolutely brilliant. All right. Yeah, thank cheers. you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.